How's it going people? It is The Hoff here and today I'm going to unbox my Epson printer that just came in the mail. First of all, I have to say that this printer was given to me free for beta testing slash review so I could bring it to the world and I wanted to showcase it on my YouTube channel and then go ahead and give the reviews to specific sites that would request it as well. So first of all, this model is the Epson Home XP440. It's a small in one printer that has wireless capabilities. Of course, it's a printer, so it can print. You can copy something, you can scan something, as well as print off some elegant photos. It has a high resolution 2.7 LCD, as you can see there, and it is easy for tablet and for your smartphone printing and it handles Android devices and should also be able to handle your iPhone device. So without further ado, let's take the new unboxing knife and let's take a look inside. So first thing here is the power cord, which we will set to the side over there. The next thing we have is just a white cardboard piece of paper. We shouldn't need that. Didn't fly very far. And here we have the printer and it shows by grabbing the bag to pull out the printer. So essentially we will grab the bag, pull out the printer. As you can see down in there is some spec usage paper guide. We will set that off to the side and take the phone pieces off. Sorry for the shaky camera. I have now stabilized that. Okay. So, getting into this printer, as you see here, it is energy efficient. Of course, it's Wi-Fi because nowadays what product isn't Wi-Fi enabled when you have refrigerators, ovens, and everything under the sun Wi-Fi enabled, why can't your printer be Wi-Fi as well? So we have Wi-Fi. There's your power button, has a home button here. Now, granted, I did not know much about this printer when they sent it to me. I just knew it was a small printer that is not really expensive. I will link it down below, but if I'm not mistaken. The printer itself is only valued at $60 US, which is not really expensive when you think about a all-in-one printer that can pretty much handle all of your needs because who's using fax nowadays? And that's the only thing I don't believe this thing will do is fax. If you're using fax and you're at home and it's not part of a business for whatever reason, what the hell are you doing? Plus, it's fax. You can send stuff through email and other means. So why are you still using fax? Upgrade. So here you have buttons and these aren't touchscreen. As you hear, there's clickiness to them. So you will have to physically press the buttons and then you will see it on the display. There is stuff to protect the display and the buttons it feels like. And then there is a screen film here to protect for shipping purpose. So let's go ahead and let's take the printer completely out and we shall set the printer down on its side. So just noticing right off the gate, in case you want to look at it from this angle, you can go ahead and tilt it so you can easily see and then it has stuff packaged for shipping so you should easily be able to take off the actual nice protective there and then the ever so slightly keelage right here the newness factor you gotta love it and it wraps to the inside And then if you look down here, 
you have where you're going to be scanning and copying from right here. And then back here in the back is where you can feed what it says it holds up to 100 sheets. So that should be good enough for all of your printing needs. Having 100 sheets available at a time, if you happen to need more at one time, then you can go ahead and add more. And there is a little tray to bring up there. And you can tilt as such, so it can hold your papers in place. And then right there you go for maneuvering how big of a sheet you're going to print. So essentially this looks is what it's going to look like when it's just sitting on your desk. Here's the aerial shot. And then of course you have the stuff down here. So when it's done printing, it will come out here and you have a nice tray to catch it. You have an SD card reader here along with an ejector and it is part of the Expression Home Package. And there is nothing in there. It's just a little clip here so you can actually tilt out and bring back. And then if I can actually get it. There is film right there. There we go. And I believe that is all of the packaging film. So let us go ahead and fire this up and I will connect it to my internet. So doing this one handed is a little bit difficult, but I want to give you the first person view experience as if you yourself were unboxing this and how you'd see it from your eyes. So as you see, this is going to be a special plug. So the one end looks like this. And then of course you're gonna have the other end down here that's going to connect to your outlet. So don't think you're gonna be able to get away with the possible same cable that is used to connect your computer. This cable does use for other devices, but it's not a cable that powers up your computer as well. Not that you should want to use the same cable. So. Looking into the back here is where you have the actual port. And you want to make sure that you get a good tight. Okay, before we get into actually plugging in the printer, let us go over the cards it needs for ink cartridges. So there are four ink cartridges that come with them. And generally these are test cartridges. You get an initial cartridge, it lasts for a little bit, but it is not designed to hold a lot of ink in them. So when you get them, they look the same size, but they're not completely full with ink. So they'll work for a decent amount of pages, but not as much as the ones you get from the store. But for this one, it has the ink cartridges of the 288i design. And they are all labeled, not for resale, of course. And they have the code, and you will see exactly what the number is below the code. And they are marked, so you'll be able to tell. As you see, there's red, there's blue, there's black, and then down below there is yellow. So that tells you which cartridges 
Those are the only cartridges you will need with these. You replace one at a time instead of having to buy one color that runs out and the whole cartridge is colorized. So you end up saying blue is out. Then you got to replace your full color cartridge just because your blue is out and you need to print blue. Well, not with these. And essentially when you buy such printers, just understand you're probably gonna have to buy a cartridge for each. So four cartridges, that way you have the backup for when these run out, but at least they do give you the cartridge so it is ready to go out the box. Another thing you get, which can be good, can be bad, is they give you a disc. The disc says it works with the latest version of Windows that most people are using, and then some. So you have Microsoft Windows 10, which is the latest, then you have Windows X of the various versions that were out. You have Windows 7, which some people are still using because they refused to upgrade to Windows 8, and they did not understand anything about Windows 10 so far to want to upgrade. You have Windows Vista it is compatible with, Windows XP Professional 64 Edition, as well as Windows XP. I'm not sure why they differentiated between them. If it's Windows XP, why not allow it to work with Windows XP, considering it says XP, what's the difference? And then you have the Mac users of OS X 10 to Mac OS uh, Mac OS 10.12.10. So OS X and then it's 10.6.8. So keep that in mind. If you have an earlier version of OS X that you will want to upgrade to at least that or higher when dealing with this. But getting back to why this is good or bad. So yes. This will be your drivers, and this will be an all-in-one setup. But when you do this initial setup, if it doesn't connect to the internet and tell you that your drivers are up to date for your printer, you want to make sure that you connect to the internet and verify your drivers are up to date. There are specific vulnerabilities and issues with drivers that will get corrected with new updated drivers. So that is why this can be a good thing because not everyone has internet right off the bat and if you don't have internet and you still need to print something, this will allow you to print. But if you have internet, make sure you update your drivers as soon as you possibly can. The next thing in here would be talking about your printer and how you set it up. So this goes over everything dealing with the printer as far as the types of model number that this user manual supports and it supports three different with us having the 440 model here. So let's go ahead and crack this open and see what it is talking about. I'll be right back. Okay, after cracking this open, you still have the disc, so we will set that to the side. But what you get here is you have this in multiple languages. So because I don't understand the other language of this, if you do, then so be it, use it, but I will set that to the side. You have a quick guide here, which is your user guide support and has easy to follow instructions on how to set this up. So if you need to, you can go ahead and look at the easy follow instructions or you can just ask me if you have any questions and I haven't shown it. I will show you or tell you or I can show you in a video of some sort if you must see it in video form. So essentially it is start to finish of what we just went through with the unpacking and list the contents that you will need saying do not open 
the ink cartridges until you're ready to install them because they're vacuum sealed and if you open them you could actually contaminate if you get any dirt or anything on the connectors that gives the ink to the printer then you may run into some issues with it not registering the ink. The second portion is to turn on and configure. So before you even put in the ink cartridges, which is fairly normal, you wanna make sure that you turn on and you configure your settings. So it says that we need to raise the control panel so you can see it. Then you wanna turn on the power. You don't want to lower the control panel without squeezing the release bar because you could possibly damage the product. And then it goes through installation, which is going to, at the point of selecting the language, tell you to install the cartridges. So it explains installing the cartridges, which is a fairly simple procedure. And then once you have the cartridges inserted, you will lower the scan unit and you will start to charge the ink delivery system as they call it. And you will hit the button, the printer will start charging the ink cartridges and it takes approximately four minutes from start to finish. You will see the completion menu and it will say the charging is complete, but you must make sure that you do not turn off the printer while it's charging because it will waste the ink. Because basically while it's charging, it has to go through its process. And if you don't let it go through its full process, it may have to have it go through the whole process again. And it will be just using up your ink unnecessarily. That is definitely not something you need to do. The fourth step, you wanna make sure you load paper Make sure the product is done charging, then flip the feeder forward. And once the guard is forward, raise the paper support and tilt it backwards slightly as I've shown before. And then you wanna slide the guide all the way over so that way you have it properly placed. And then you want to have the principal paper side up depending on if it's glossy or if it's not glossy paper make sure what you want to print is on the side facing you and that it is all the way over according to this against the right side of the panel and then you want to go ahead and line up the edger so it is always feeding the paper in properly that way, you know, it doesn't slip into the side and it starts printing off. And then you wanna make sure that once it's printed, that you check the settings and make sure everything's okay. It's okay, you're good to go. Then your printer is set up. And you might be thinking, I'm done. Not necessarily, because all this is doing is setting up your printer. But that's setting up your printer so it can actually be used. But in order to fully use it, you have to connect it to something. So the first thing you must do is you must connect the Wi-Fi. And let's see if it goes over here. Yes. Okay. So over here, it says that you need to make sure that the printer is not connected to your computer, which for myself, I'm going to be using the Wi-Fi, and you wanna make sure that your computer is going to uh, set up as a Wi-Fi printer. So basically, you're gonna have to set up your wireless connection, which we will go over that because it does not say about network wireless setup. It says about printing, it says about all that, but in their instructions, I do not see 
anything that mentions on here about wireless printing for connecting to your Wi-Fi. So let us see and work that magic now by actually connecting the printer to the power and then going with the connection set up over here and installing the cartridges and connecting to my Wi-Fi. Okay, so the printer is plugged in and we are going to go ahead and start the initial setup. So as you see, it said to tilt. Granted, I know most of this. I didn't have to read it, but I'm doing a lot of this for the benefit of making sure that you guys can see everything. So let's get down here and show you that there are plenty of languages to choose from because this is sold in multiple countries, I'm assuming. So you want to start out by hitting your language, which is English. So in the initial, it says preparing. We will go ahead and we'll move the paper off to this side as we are not needing it. And we will wait till the preparing tells us that it is time to set up with ink. So there we go. Starting initiation. It is time. So in doing so, we will go ahead and we will set this up with ink. Okay, so it doesn't go up any further. So over oh, here is the ink, and I will set you guys down. I'll be right back here, this one being black. And as you can see in here, it is clearly labeled, so you can start from whichever end you like. And the ink cartridges themselves, they are vacuum sealed, as you can see. And they have a nice, easy open right there at the top. So we will start with the blue, or what do they call it? See, what is that sign? I don't know. We'll start with the blue. So, did we grab it? Yes, we got the blue. Okay, so once you pull it out of its actual package, there is a tab there, as you can see right here. The tab says remove. So, you want to remove the tab and then you will place it for the contact side going in. So, you will see it like this. So in case you wanted to see the side again with it being opened, there's the side, there is the contact, and then there is the top. So as you see, it just slides down in, and then you are... So we have the red, now we will install the yellow. So just like we did for the blue, we are going to, we did the same thing for the red and now we will do it for the yellow. So again, take it out of the vacuum seal. Of course, same thing, remove tab. So you want to peel the tab off, that is trash. And then just like the rest, you will just stick it straight down in and then you will place that where it says push. Now we will go on to the black. And just like the rest, take it out of its vacuum seal. Okay, so like the rest, you will go ahead 
and set this one in the same position and press down. Then you will close. Once they are done, you see here it says start initiation. So you hit it and it is going to check the ink cartridges. So as long as you press them down, you have no issues with contaminating on the contact. It will start doing its thing. And it says initiating, please wait. Turn the power, do not turn the power off until the initiation is complete and that the initiation takes four minutes. So while it's doing its thing, I will not let you suffer the four minutes as this video is going to be decently long enough. Okay, so I put in the password. The first thing it asks is it finds all the wireless networks within your area and then it will ask you which one is yours. You tell it this naming is mine. Then it will tell you for, or ask you, I should say, for your password, and it has the ability for whatever you set up as your password. So if you do password complexity, which consists of having some uppercase lettering, some lowercase lettering, and you add in some special characters, such as the at symbol, or a dollar sign, or the ampersand, or hashtag, you know, any one of those you add, you can have that selected as well. And then you can type in your password no matter how long or how short your password is. And then it will say all of your settings again, just to confirm it, you hit okay. And then you get to the part that says that you can register it and it asks you if you wanna print. So it says you can register, you can connect to the service menu or remind you later. So as of right now, I will remind later. And then it says setup is complete. Would you like to print the check report now? So yes, I will go ahead and load this up. So do as it's shown where it says loading just like that. I will just put a couple sheets in there, all connected, and we will see how nice and quickly this prints and if it is loud. Confirm, print check report, and I'm going to select yes on letter size, plain paper, yes, and it is now going to print. So the main reason why I wanted this printer is I have an HP printer. It's a wireless printer. It does similar features as this one. But where this one is top loaded from here, my HP was bottom loaded and this one prints out a heck of a lot faster than my other printer. So basically this one just says your network is working correctly and it says all of your stuff is checked. Then at the bottom it says the IP address that the printer has for your network which mind you it's going to tell you an IP address that is the IP address your printer has on your local network now granted you more than likely will not be printing anywhere else to your home network but the ability to do so is probably out there but the IP address it gives you is just IP address within your home network so there is a way to set it up just to print and have it communicate just by IP instead of using the software it gives if you were only interested in a printer, wireless, and no other features. And then it says that I've used a password that was WPA2 encrypted, which is what you want to use for all of your communication needs when you're doing over Wi-Fi until they come out with something better. It says the signal strength is excellent, which it should because as of now, I have this hooked up, which I will be doing a test video when I can get an actual computer desk going because as you've seen, this is really cluttered with everything under the sun, including having a Python coin from SANS. If you don't know what that is, then look up SANS course, S-A-N-S security, and it's 573. And if you win the group challenge or single challenge, if you, there's not many people in your course, then you will get a coin like that. 
really good course. I loved it. And that along with other things I have, I'll be going over in another video to explain basically how I'm able to get this stuff sent to me for free. And if you do things like me, eventually you will be able to do the same thing because as you well know, I don't have any subscribers. So that's where we will end this video for now. The install should be fairly simple on the computer. If you have any questions or issues dealing with the install on the computer, as always, you can let me know and I will help you assist in any way within the comments down below. I will link the printer so you know where to buy it from. You see the pricing. And I will also try to link where you can buy the cartridges for this. If you still happen to choose that you want this printer and you want to get the extra cartridges right away. If not, you can just go down to the store and I guarantee you that any place that has this printer will more than likely as well have the cartridges such as Staples or the Office Max or any one of those places will probably have it. So hopefully you like this video. Hopefully if you're watching you are already subscribed. If not, shame on you. Hit that subscribe button or hit it because as soon as this video is over, it's going to be popping up for you to hit. And if you like this video and haven't seen my other videos, there are plenty of other videos to watch. So go ahead and watch them all.